Okay. We will call this meeting of the Historic District Commission to order at 7.02, and I'll see Goodrich as a, a full member. Um, so how would you like to read the call? I'm waving the... Oh, um, if anyone would like to read the hearing or the procedures, they're over there in the yellow sheet, but I'll make a motion to waive them. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. They will wait. Todd, would you read yeah, it all? Sure. Dear Matt, please publish the following public notice for one insertion on Tuesday, March 14th, 2023. Town of Groton notice of public hearing historic district commission. The Historic District Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, March 21st, 2023 at 7 p.m. at the Groton Town Hall Annex, 134 Groton Long Point Road, and virtually via the Zoom platform to hear the following applications requesting a certificate of appropriateness. HCC 23-1141 Pearl Street Field, Ullery Owner Applicant, Sidewall Vent for Gas Stove, PIN number 26191842486. HDC 23-12. 36 Pearl Street, Advanced Improvements, Applicant, there were pin number 26191842194. A Zoom meeting link will be posted to the town's website meetings calendar or can be attended by visiting www.zoom.us, webinar ID 896-0470-3543, password 408-839, or by phone. 1312-626-6799. Applications are on file and available for public inspection during normal business hours at the Planning Department, 134 Groton Long Point Road, Groton, Connecticut. Dated this 13th day of February, 2023 at Groton, Connecticut, Todd Brady, Secretary. All right, so we'll start with the HTC 23-11. This is 41 Pearl Street. I got it. Uh, good evening, uh, Norton Wheeler, Mystic River Building Company. I've submitted uh, application. Well, thank you very much. I've submitted applications and photos and so forth, which um, um, I was instructed to uh, resubmit a new application as it was the last vote. Um, we had two abstentions and two four. Um, so I've submitted the new application, which I believe you have uh, that in front of you with uh, photos and so forth showing the vent for the stove and also showing four or five photos of other vents for stoves uh, also within the historic commission similar in nature. So I present them up on the screen here. Yeah. You're doing it like all over again? That's up to you guys. I mean, you're, you're not submitting anything different than was already here before. No. It was just the vote was the concern before. Right. Do you want to? I'm, if nothing's changed. I just take a look. I wasn't here. It was just a technicality. We didn't have the three votes necessary. But it's, it's, it's a majority of the members present, present not a majority of members voting. That's the event? No, this is the event. Those are yes. samples of other vents. other vents on the same street. Great. Oh, that right there. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 That's just the same as this. Just that was the not approved one. This is the one. This is the one this time. Okay. This one is stamping. Yeah. Stamping. But none of these are going to identify. That's a good one. You're going to do that. Well, that's the same as what's already in the pond. Oh. Okay. No, already stamped it. Okay. I thought that was easy. Yeah, that's what's in Okay. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to say? I do not. Okay. Um, if anyone in the audience has anything to say in support of the application, does anyone in the audience have anything to say against the application? Uh, HTC 23-11 is closed. Uh, HTC 23-12, this is 36 Pearl Street, no replacement. They are not here. Okay. 
Okay. Is that a motion to table it? Um, are they on Zoom or anything? Just out of curiosity. No, there's only one person there. Just me. Okay. And uh, when was it submitted? Date wise, the 65 day issue. That was sorry. Not till May 13th. I move to table it. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So HCC 23 dash 11 is continued. Okay. Um, I guess we'll jump to or we'll close public hearings and then jump to preamp. No, 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 you vote. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so HTC 23 12, this is the vent. Any comments, motions? Um, yeah, you know what, though? Do you have a, do you have a file that says 23 12? This is 23 03, that's the earlier. There's, well, you got it right there with you. Two files, right? 23 there. 11. That's the one we're rolling in. You got two files in your hand. No, that's 11, not 12. You got 12, 03 and 11. That should, sorry, I should have been 23-11 there. But 03 was the earlier application. Right. So I just brought it in just in case you had to find the look at it. They're flipping on this. That's why. Okay. So 23, sorry. HTC 23-11 is 41 Pearl Street, but then they flipped it on the public consideration. So whatever. I don't know. Um, HTC 23-11. Right. I'm just, this, this, these are the stamped. This is the stamped exhibits, which were resubmitted, but I've got the old ones. So can I just, can we just stick them in 23-11? No, keep them with the original. Keep them in the original? You guys approve it, then I'll just... Okay, you'll, you'll compile them. Uh, okay, comments, motions? Um, I move to approve. Second. Um, all in favor? Then you have to do a roll call vote. I think that's it. So I'm gonna abstain for the same reason I did at the last vote. <clears throat> um, approve. I vote to approve. I vote to approve. I vote to approve. Approve. Okay. So ACC twenty three dash eleven. Thank you. The address of the advanced one that we just tabled. Forty one. Or sorry, thirty six Pearl Street. Thirty six Pearl. Yeah. Number. It's got my thing. <laughs> Oh, the next Second page. Down to the bottom, she's 24. 24. Okay. 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 Oh, the date today? Yeah, 2021. 20, 21st, 21. yeah. Thank you. All right. So we'll move on to pre app. Like to come up? Thank you. I am Cam Bortz with Mystic Carb Signs. I'm representing uh, 3 Pearl Street LLC. Uh, this is for signage on 3 Pearl Street, which I know you folks have looked at any number of times before, but I've just uh, stick it. You can just center it under the, the camera. camera. It's right over your head there. Oh, I see. Okay, very good. All right, I have a number of photos of the building as it looks now. And a picture of what we plan to do there. For clarity, I've also constructed a very simple model just to make it abundantly clear as to what we have in mind. Is there a way we can get the model on the camera? Uh, I'm not, I don't know. Flip it up. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm going to ask. Good, them. Sure. Yeah. Do you mind doing that just so everybody? Whatever it takes. We can. So it's going to go on the corner of the building that size? No, this is not the scale. scale. No, this is not the scale. This is just to show how, which direction these signs are facing so that it's clear in terms of, because it's a three-dimensional wraparound type of, of a thing. Will the scale be the same as we're seeing in the picture? Is that yes. accurate? Scale? Okay. Yes. You might flip it around because it's upside down right now. Oh, 
that's tough. Oh, to yeah, do. never mind. That's right. tough to do yeah. because it's got this bottom on it. I'm sorry. Is it going to be carved and <laughs> yes, or? carved, carved and full leafed? But then the uh, like the street names are they part of the sign too? Yes, yes. And so I'm a little. So that part is going to be like sort of catty corner, and the street names are going to be flush with the building. Yep, just just like this. These are going to be on the directly on the facade, and this is going to be mounted at an angle. But it can't be Pearl Street both directions, streetwise, right? It's identifying the building, not the street. Okay. Oh, this, oh, that's how you read the sign? Yes. Oh, that was not clear. I'm just confused. Oh, that's, that's quite all right. That's, that's quite all right. Up on it. I was totally following him. Maybe. I was not clear on that at okay. all. <laughs> it's the shops at 3 Pearl Street. It's the shops at 3 Pearl Street. Right. Oh, I did not read that. Okay. I would I would be so confused. <laughs> you probably never find your way out of there. I mean, yeah, like, this is the longest street ever. This it is, goes from Maine to... <laughs> This is an interesting design problem that I've been asked to to yeah. work on yeah. here to identify this building, and then it got that it got has stores in it because shops seem to move in there to die, and they're trying to now they've got an owner who wants to spend some money on yeah. making the building more appealing to to the people who yeah to. Well, to their renters and to the people that are in visiting the and that are shopping, that they can find it. Are the colors you're showing on this photograph? Are you going to have the brown and gold leaf and the it's black? All black. It's okay. all black. It's meant to be all black, black and gold. Is there a problem that it might confuse people as to the actual streets and the street signs? Not a street sign. I know, but I mean, yeah, uh, so a tourist comes up and then they think, oh, well, this well, is Pearl Street. That's, maybe nine, that's 911 address of the building, right? Three Pearl Street? Right. I mean, I'll be honest, guys. I read it just the way he wants. It. I didn't see it the way you guys saw it. It's also not. And I, I think it's pretty obvious. Anybody walking up to it and looking at the driveway is going to not going to say, "Oh, this must be Pearl Street." I'm with you personally. I mean, I'm not going to comment on anybody else's interpretation. It's literally, but it, on I read it exactly. Right. The way it's literally on the building. Pearl Street. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's a great looking sign, and it's a heck of a lot better looking than the building. I love the yeah. sign personally. Uh, there's, there's, you know, that building has nowhere to go but up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Emily. Where's the? I, I think it's great. I love it. Yeah, I, I really, I, I, think I really like the design. I think no. it's terrific. No, I, did, you, did, did, did you think of that yourself, or did you steal that? Well, we discussed a number of options for this building. One of them was to put yeah, a uh, large projecting yeah, sign. Because it has an app. And I said, well, that's kind of wasting the back side of it because you're not concerned with people uh, coming from coming south on Pearl Street. And he wanted to have, then we, you know, we talked about a couple of things and he wanted a separate sign on the front, a separate sign on the, on, on the side. And I said, why don't we combine these and put something on the corner? We've had a corner sign there before. Okay. Several years ago, we had one for the barber shop that was mounted on that corner. So this is, you know, this has some precedent. Well, it doesn't blend in with all the overhang signs. You go through downtown, they almost start to blend in with one another because it's just a bunch of them. Yeah. yeah. You lose track. So I think this is going to be, I mean, if you're you know, looking at the way it exhibits on the photograph, um, I think it's an interesting and you know, it's it's solving a problem, is what I'm trying to get to, of identifying that building as being commercial and as having retail shops. But you said all black. Obviously, the letters can't be black on them. No, it's gold, gold letters on black. 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 Okay, so you just you're just going to want to give that information in your application: the size of the sign, mm -hmm. the background, the gold leaf, because it's not on your on your application. Yep. Okay. The dimensions. Everything. Yeah, uh, everything. Yeah, like I said, I wanted to get in here and find out just what you guys thought of it before I go through. Sure. The full application process. Is it showing how high up? That will be shown also. Okay. I mean, you, you've done it enough, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's cool. Yeah, I like it. 
Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, anything else? I no. no. I'm just on the logistical. How are you going to mount the one that's that says the shop's at? That'll have a that'll have a frame behind it going back to the to the building. Yeah, because if you get strong winds. Oh yeah. 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 No, it's it's a little bit of an engineering problem, but I don't think it's certainly not insurmountable. I mean that this this sign is scales to being four feet by 30 inches. It's not very big. Same size as the other overhangs in town. Yeah. Yeah, it's within it's within that range. These are 18 inches by eight feet. Eight feet. Eight feet, right. And uh Measuring the building, the building is the frontage of the building is 30, 35 and a half feet. And the distance from the corner to the center of the center of this window is seven feet three inches. So you can see that the sign slightly goes past where the that center mullion is on the on the window just to give you an idea of the scale and the massing of this in terms of how it's going to look on the building they got to do something better to draw people down there because you you forget about it no, no, I, the concept is not anything i'm against i just i just think the the curly cue, the whatever, the French design at the end makes it look like an arrow to me. I'm just saying as a, as a, as an observer, and so that's why I thought this was a, a street sign. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Bill, I'm thinking, you know, somebody's coming to town from Kansas and they are walking down the street and they say, "Well, that's Pearl Street. This is Pearl Street." Right. Are they going to differentiate? Well, yeah, the, building, the building's not on the corner, John. Right. Yeah, the and, and is not on the corner. And as somebody who's spent it's not on the corner of any seaport that looks like the back of every boat at the seaport, that kind of carved yeah, gold no, leaf. I'm just, I'm just like sharing my inter I mean, interpretation. Okay. I think if it's on the corner, I think. Okay. I would be a little more concerned. Okay. okay. But it is, it is a dry way. You're not. You have to be. My, my mistake. Yeah. No, that's quite all right. I, I, and, you know, I that's this is why I brought this because I realized. This is going to be a little bit more complicated to explain to people how this is going to work. So, so I've gone to some, you know, made some efforts to yeah. first explain it to my customer and then yeah. to you guys so that, you know, you have an idea of what we're going to be applying for. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. So just hang on to this. Okay. Yep. It's got to re yeah, resubmit. Yeah, I'm going to be. Yeah, I'm going to be finishing this with a detailed page about Sorry. specs, materials, etc. I like the mock-up too. Thanks, Brian. I think it really helped explain it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, should I be keeping yeah, all these? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you did. All right. Very good. I think this is the first time I've been here that we've had this. So that's why. Oh, yeah, I can see that. That's why I brought multiple copies of everything. But very helpful. So that was pretty good. Unless anyone else is out there. We're starting to sort of Early yeah, night tonight. Yeah. Pardon me. You hit him with the door. Um, I think I'll be okay, but I appreciate it. Well done. I'm gonna bounce the bill. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> well done, sir. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Okay. Um, public communications. Oh, I someone actually reached out some reached out to me. Um. I was going to ask him, but I don't think he had anything to do with it. Um, 41 Pearl Street, where that vent is, I guess they put a fence up. And someone had been watching the whole thing, but I don't I don't ever remember approving it. I don't either. Check into it. Just give me a good. Thank you. 
When anybody reach out to me too, they wanted to know what the five oldest homes in Mystic were. Do we have any way to research that? Because I got no idea. Yours? I'm guessing mine's up there. <laughs> On the Groton side, that is. On the, in the Mystic Historical Group. Well, yeah, the whole town of Groton. Reach out to maybe the State Historical Commission. See what they, they can't run it through land records. Is there a way to do it by date built? I don't know how they would. I mean, tax uh, assessment? Be searchable. No, because yeah. it has a GIS that just says 1900 for new yeah. built. Tax assessor, I don't know. I think it's maybe asking Betsy McAllister would know where to go with that. Yeah, would her. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, approval of the minutes from March 7th. Move to approve. Second. Where's Ted? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's approved. Uh, old business? Is this, this old business? Is there anything on the agenda? Is there anything? You have my, you have my agenda. I don't. <laughs> it says old business. <laughs> it says nothing there. And no, I think it says uh, policy change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the discussion there. So I yeah, gave everybody a copy of the notice that we we're looking to put out and doing laminate. This is just a template draft. So take a look at it. See what you think. Your permanent marker on there would be on a permanent marker with. Yeah, my only comment was that it says historic district commission notice of meeting and application for a certificate of appropriateness. I think there should be a connection between the, the first thing. Yeah, notice of meeting on about four. Yeah, I agree. Pick your boys and. Hold on. No, 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 because they're two separate. So, so read that second sentence as its own sentence. And the application for certificate of appropriateness at this address for the following project. Yeah, but no, right, but notice says, of meeting for an application. application. Notice of meeting. Notice of meeting for what? Yeah, I think that should say I think, four. I think you should just say, just add the word for it to connect the two okay. statements. I mean, it's it's hardly it's critical. Yeah, no, I see. It's probably less likely someone would be confused about this than exactly where Pearl Street was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think it should be. Remind me why I like you. Just remind me. <laughs> so basically, for an application. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, if I'm standing in front of someone's property and I read the sign, Better than what we've had. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a huge. <laughs> no, yeah. Who's going to pay for this? That's where we're putting our fees. No. no. <laughs> Seriously. Who's going to pay for this? I know. We're going to figure that out. Get a cost. Uh, Tom was going to get a, the amount because they do this installing fee. So he's going to tell me how much it costs. It's, the mar it's a marginal cost. I mean, but is the applicant going to pay for this? Well, that's what we're going to talk. we got to look at doing fees down the road, too. Seems like they should. Yeah. I would say with our eight million dollar ARPA sur surplus, we can afford a few pieces. Oh, we get nothing out of the ARPA. We get, we get nothing the town is swimming in cash. You get nothing from the ARPA. <laughs> and then, yeah, you know, what? How much detail? Uh, my, my only minor criticism is the one thirty four. Just needs to catch. They highlighted Groton Long Point Road and not the one thirty four. So it's fine. Yeah, that's the catch. Yeah. yeah, that's. I mean, it's nothing. You want the phone number to be the same size too? Yeah, probably. The phone should be. And, and do we need to discuss the content of what is going to be put here? Is it going to be whatever the application? Whatever's is. on the application, right. just the reproduction. Right. And then are we just are we going to decide? Are we going to make this like yellow? You can do whatever color you want. Well, I mean, we don't have jurisdiction over color. Hot pink. Um, you over this? Oh, okay. Yeah, this, 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 uh, you gotta take a rule. Take a motion of what color you want. And this yeah. planner one is that an official title for Tom Zanarini? Yeah. Planner one. Yeah. That's so the one is a, is what his job title is. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know if that was like an extra. Order. Why are we putting a time there? Aren't all our meetings at seven p.m.? Unless you change it somewhere along the way. I, mean, I think we should just fill that in, don't you think? All right. Yeah. Like, what if it's a special meeting? Yeah, why okay. Why don't you just make the applicant print this on white paper and put it on their front lawn? It's going to last long enough. The plan, well, the laminate will keep it for the weather because anyone Yeah, to... right. Yeah. No, but yeah, if you start laminate, going down that road of imposing fees, and you got to be responsible for what the fees are going to go to. Because well, imposing fees and then having them end up in the general budget is sort of worthless. Well, the issue with the, I think the issue with the fee that was discussed earlier wasn't so much the fee for 
this. It was a fee for making an application to the historic district. Right, which if you want to do it the same as a special permit, that would be a four hundred dollar thing. That's well, we can we can decide on the amount. They, right. they they both said that the fees tend to be somewhat nominal. Enough for the processing. The, the, the much covering processing fees are getting it all through. The start to charge some kind of a, no, a nominal fee. Just I think it would probably be a good idea to look at other. Yeah. Yeah, it costs you a hundred bucks to use the dump in this town for a year too. I mean, you guys, you know, I'm just get us every chance you can. That's what I mean. I'm anti like throwing another. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm I just gonna I'm gonna say it. I look at what the town's been and everything else and the raises they hand out to people just because I think we can afford a couple hundred bucks for signs. Yeah. If the town's that strapped, may I donate it in kind and I'll write the check for a hundred bucks to make some signs. I mean, if we get to that, if we're that desperate. Go that on the record. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I think it's like an encouragement <clears throat> that kids have to pay for it. Because how many times have we have applicants come here, have an approval, and then they do nothing and they've wasted our time. They do right. pre hearing. Yeah, yeah. too. You know. they have some skin in the game yeah, yeah there's both ways I, I don't know I, i'm good with it either way i just don't think we should let budget hang up some paper and laminate I mean, what's that cost going to be 20 cents a piece yeah i don't know he's going to give That's a number what it costs right, right but i don't think the dollar amount we're talking about here is is, is paying no. fees no no not at all it's unrelated. Really, i think it's a separate issue separate issue i'm just assuming that but if you have the fees and you have a working budget then you have some funding to do things like this oh yeah if it went to like a budget that we could yeah. control sure yeah. it goes to just wherever yeah, it would be like a standard process i'm assuming it'd be normally be standard processing fee for that and then whatever else goes into the fund yeah i mean when you pay a building fee. permit fee fee yeah is it going just the general fund it's not supposed to i mean it's it's kept separate or at least from a bookkeeping yeah. entry yeah. and then and then does it get applied to expenses of the Building department? Yeah. It does. Okay. So it defrays certain operating expenses. Yeah, it takes care of my department. And then uh, on top of that, it goes into the assessment offers and other offices that are affected by the new development coming to town. So we could do the same thing. Yeah. But what are we are we talking about who's going to pay for the sign? Or we no. that's what I'm talking about. No, no, we're not talking about who's going to pay no, for the I sign. Think You're the, going to pay for the sign. Were you at the last meeting? No, I'm just kidding. Brown, it's, 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 if everyone I, I would say I would, the signs. What I would suggest is if you like the sign with those amend, amended corrections on there, where next meeting I'll have Tom give me what it costs him over in Stonington for it. Okay. For, 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 for quantity, he probably gets like 250 of them. I don't know how many he gets, but yeah. So I make a motion to approve it as amended. Well, I'm just, you wanted, you wanted to say historic district commission notice of meeting for an application for a certificate of appropriateness at the following address for the following project. That's a lot I, of fours. I, 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 think fours. I like the on. Uh, instead of for on an, on an application for a certificate appropriateness at the address in regards to the following project four is fine there okay fine there. i just think you were guessing the grammatical yes yeah. got that beat on an application on. for a certificate of appropriateness so instead of for those do not know at right. this address for the following project and then the uh, font things for the things down the bottom. And I, and I would just fill in the 7 p.m. If they if you, you get a special meeting, then we can deal with that at the time. White out. Yeah, white out. <laughs> I'm not going to cross it out with a different time. <laughs> and then make 134 the same size. And the phone How number. How do we feel about the phone number? Maybe. It, yeah, the phone number as well. Font and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We just get rid of the font altogether. I just took one. And and quite frankly, well, sorry. One other thing, you just shouldn't say for info. You should say for information. It's just kind of hacky. That's actually a very. I mean, if you wanted to really get, you know, you could probably take out the words phone and email too. Kind of self evident, right? Yeah. You would think. If I see the email, I figured. Well, so take we... phone and email out. Sort of be like same going to the web page and looking this stuff up. Just, just, I would <laughs> just leave that, but just do four information. It's just, it's gonna cut. Think of all the complaints we've had. Just yeah. and let's be like I said, I subscribe day. I never read the paper part on digital. I weren't that big knots from you for my fireplace yeah. so yeah. stuff. Yeah. Dry them out. Yeah, they work really good. So we'd say for information, actually go to our web page where it's listed anyway. Let's change it to that. <laughs>
Like, I, don't know. I mean, I think the publishing would yeah, pay. Yeah, right. The fact that we still spend money on it. There's actually a bill in place where they're looking to change that. You should. Yeah. It's just not. It is. They've been trying to put the newspaper. It's just stopping that. They're pressing lobbying big time to not get rid of that because that's where they're making the saving. They're saving the newspapers right now. With well, it's all they've got for advertising. Exactly. So I'm saying they're losing all their money. I actually, want to. Actually, can we just revisit what he, he was joking about? On this, but on a serious level, can we put the website of where? Because I, like I was just trying to find. Oh, I like that idea. That's a good idea. Just put the website of the town of Groton. We should have one of the smart things. The QR code. Yeah. You could QR do the QR code. code. I actually could. Yeah, QR code. Put that right on there. But I, I, but I don't know. What do you guys think of having the web? I think it's a good idea. Yeah, it, yeah. Should, more to what we have here. So can or you just put that up? No, just the link for the meeting. Just the link to the meeting. The website. The main meeting, meeting page. Right? Yeah. And they can find it from there. Yeah. yeah. Some sort of link. Yeah. Hey, the website of Curacle, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care how. I don't care how. I don't care how. I don't care how. I get one. I get one a day. <laughs> you don't have another. You're not going to get another one. Right? It's a specific person, though. It should just go to the meeting page. Because then you can reuse the sign. If you got to make it site. If you go to, you could go to the link to the web page, and then they're going to call up. The number there to get a hold of somebody if they want more information, Which or if they want to come in via Zoom. Yeah, right. oh, yeah. yeah, that's the that's the link I was talking about. If they wanted to visit during Zoom, the, the web page is going to be changing within the next few months anyway. As we're going to the Energo setup, so that web page is going to get all tweaked around. But so then maybe we do the QR code because you can <clears throat> guys figure it out. Yeah, yeah. or so only print two hundred initially, and then when you do the re uh, maybe print, print like twenty then. Yeah, 200 200 we, 10 know, years of supply okay what well, we go through like two three a month i mean two three uh twice a month two to three so about five six maybe a month so if that's a month 12 months 72 it's a year so it'd be two years worth you got 250 you have a little over two years worth of science you know, what if we come back and we don't like something yeah that's why i do a small well product. he's not going to laminate 200 of them at one time or is he going to get order them i think like, he gets them laminated. he gets them yeah. laminated yeah yeah i say we just do like 50 that way yeah, we want to change the website or something we can well how about, how about I get him to give us a breakdown of the prices sorry meeting's over <laughs> i want to do a breakdown of the prices i can I'll, yeah I'll, there you go i'll do it next time i have a breakdown of the prices of what it would be like for 25 50 100 whatever the cost there you go all right um can you just before we go back to i'm sure perhaps or whatever peter's got going on but um can you just let us know about that list of stuff that they were looking into, like where we are? Who's they? Uh, Tom, I think. I mean, there's like the the signs or the steps out of front of the Yeah, oh, the steps. So the, on the steps, he talked to them. They actually kept them. They still have the granite or whatever for this or the, whatever it was. So he said, push comes to shove, he's going to put them back. Okay, so back on the building. We're pushing and shoving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'd like them back. Yep. But he, so yeah, that'll be coming back. He didn't destroy those. He actually kept them. So cool. that's good. That's yeah. Good. Good news. So then, how about the plastic fence? We still want that, or yeah. that the one on the fence? The lady was out of town. He sent out a second notice. He should get back on something by that next meeting on that. And as a bank and brew i never get that place right Banking bridge Banking bridge the speakers the speakers i haven't talked to them about the speakers i'll talk to them what else was going on there i thought there was more than that so okay. can we do a review of our bank and bridges for the next meeting you let us know yeah uh, yeah the review of everything that was in the application the yeah that's what they said all right i drove by just like a black aluminum one did you see a fence yeah I almost forgot about it. I was driving to go to my project, and that was on Gravel Street. It's a small fence. No, it was on Pearl. Pearl. It was on Pearl. It was it was the sidewall vent house. No, that oh no no no, no that white the little vinyl one it's next yeah. to oh that that the the vinyl fence closer to down closer to it's like to the left harbor now. All right, but is there one at the vent house too? You were saying now. Yeah, there's a whole big black aluminum fence. Okay, so we got to look at that. So there's a 41 Pearl Street. Yeah. So you got 41 Pearl Street, the speakers at Banker Bridge, and the small fence from Pearl. Is that um, yeah. can he look at every, can he, um, Bank of Bridge, can he look at everything? <clears throat> like have the application and then look at the, the building, I guess. Talk to him. It's not just the speakers, but like. 
a full getting, evaluation of. We're just still getting a lot of neighbor complaints and stuff. Is it more noise related or is it? No. No. I mean, the exact verbiage of what's being said. Palm trees don't come back out, are they? Not yet. I think they're out there. Palm trees <laughs> should not be set on camera. Um, yeah, if you could just run right next to me and just update okay. where all that stuff is. Sure. Um, I think that was it for that stuff, right? Yeah. So what you have to do is like reopen pre apps. Or we just go back to pre apps? It doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, you want to do a motion to add it to the agenda because you already went past what it. What are you here for? If he's here for that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Pre, -app. pre applications. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm getting them. All right. So I'll make a motion. He'd come back a half hour later. We done. Uh, so I, I make a motion to add Mr. Springsteel's four things to the agenda for pre application. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Come on up. Thank you. Do we ever voting on the side? Do we have a motion on that? Oh, did we? Well, uh, we, this, think, was, this was just a discussion. I think for clarity, she just come back with it the next meeting. Yeah, that is what we were doing. But I'll break down of 2500, whatever it is. Yeah, thank you. Okay. This was kind of a discussion, not a oh, okay. anything that was motion. All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to recuse myself from this one. Thank you. I'm just trying to, for some reason, this gets swapped out to this. This is. Um... 13 Gravel? 13 Gravel Street. This is next to fine. Here's a map <laughs> with a star and a circular gravel. What was known as the Spite House, actually. Okay. And yeah, the house that had the old school house attached to the back of it. School. Next to the uh, this Masonic Hall, then there's that house. Is the next one over? Masonic Hall. Oh, no. Look at the no. Masonic Hall two. house that's sideways, then another house. Got it. Yeah, I see it's way down. Yeah. All right. And we were here, I don't know, four or five months ago with an approval on this. We were doing this um, garage. We got that approved. And we got an addition on the back of the house approved. This is the whole L here. Um, and then going through this with the owners and all, they decided on the second floor, they need a little more room on the second floor, master bathroom. And so we're proposing this shed dormer here tucked into the corner. Um, whereas this is just a gable roof. We have a shed on the other side that was approved. Peter, you want to get yourself in the... Pan feature on that thing? What's that? Pan feature? <laughs> I can zoom in closer if you want. No. Okay. Um, so that's the um, shed dormer that we're proposing. Um, you can see it in a direct view right here. Two double hung windows, six over six lights. Looking down the driveway from uh, Gravel Street right now, you can see. The, um, what that roof line looks like now. Uh, this isn't a very good shot of the roof. You can see more of the roof as you move uh, closer to downtown. Um, that's the dormer that we had approved last time around, shed dormer on the north side. This one's on the south side. That's the one on the north side as well. So from the street, this rendering here will give you a sense of what you'll see from the street. Um, so all clapboard siding to match existing, we'll probably use fiber cement clapboard, uh, architectural shingles to match what's on the house now, um, probably clad windows with simulated divided lights. The, so the, the dormer is not adjacent to that gable, it's down towards the rear of the house. This dormer? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one that's already been approved. Okay. And the, so where's the, the other dormer? Where's the other side? Other side of the house. That's the one you're looking for. 
which is this all okay. here. And you can see it in this rendering here. So the other gable is behind that. The other door. Yeah. Door. So the original house is this piece right here. This addition was done, I don't know, 20 years ago. I did that addition as well. And then we got this additional L approved four or five months ago. So this is the original structure. And there's nothing for the back house or back building. I'm sorry? There's no, there's, nothing's changed on the back building. It's only that little door. Right. Yeah, that's, I'm here for that specific dormer today. Yep. So we're leaving the rake line intact so that that doesn't uh, be taken away from the original authentic rake of the house. Not good. I don't have a problem with that. Coming. Not right now. Question? It's going to look a little jigsawy with all these little. Yeah, it's sort of my feeling too. I didn't want to say anything on the sit on it till he came back for a nap, but it does feel so a little. That little... view from the sky is not the view you're going to see, remember? Um, the view that you're really going to see is this one here. Uh, I had my druthers, I'd detach it from the main uh, the main roof of the house, but because of with the footprint of the bathroom where it is, it kind of forces me to put it there. Tommy, I mean, that's that was uh, that was my first thing. I like the way it is on the approved part. Yeah. The thing that was holding me back and agreeing with Donna was jig size the way it's attached to the roof on that side. It just I don't know. So, something about it just doesn't sit right with me. And that's tonight. I'm sorry, what was that? Something about it doesn't sit right with me. Mm -hmm. Not on camera, that's over the footprint of where the bathroom is now. If I move it back, I'm into the bedroom area. And that dormer on the other side services that bedroom. So I move it. Doesn't really do any good. Is that the actual uh, angle of the roof that we see on the top? Uh, yeah, go to the right a little bit more. Yeah, is that the angle of the roof? On the dormer? On the dormer? Yeah, yeah. It's that, that. That drawing makes the dorm appear to be immediately adjacent to the um, main roof right. line of the house. And in fact, you can see from the other mm -hmm. drawing that there's a pretty substantial yeah. separation. Yeah, and if you look, do you have that uh, up there? On the side that we're talking about now, the house next door. Which way, north or south? South. You know, block. It's pretty close to this house, so it kind of blocks the back half of the house from the road unless, until you get to the front of the driveway. Kind of. The other side is much more open as you come down Gravel Street. You guys can look at that. So you can put it. You can put it on the on the. I have to. Well, I can't see anything. I mean, I'd really want to walk the street before I kind of offer pain away the other. Sure. Yeah. I'm just wondering if the pitch of the dormer would be more slanted, whether would be less obtrusive. Drop it down a little lower. And raise it where it attaches. So it's more of a slant, like the main roof is slanted. Oh, so that, that dormer you're talking about is already approved. 
Okay. We can't change that one. We can only talk about the one. But then, then, okay. We can't talk about the one in the upper right. We can only talk about the one to the left of, yeah, right there. That's. Do both those stormer roofs intersect with the ridge? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, I think it's more pitched than, well, it's already approved. It's more pitched than it appears to be in that drawing in the upper right hand corner. Okay. Let's see it on this one here. Oops, but I, I think Peter made a good point. Which I mean, I think I think you should still go look at it. But the, there's two problems. One is that the locations are dictated by what's inside the house. But the second thing, just to understand, is that the left dormer, the one he's coming here tonight, is much more visible from the street way you come up. The right one, you don't see it as being attached or detached because you'd have to be in the neighbor's house to see that. So when you're looking at it visually from the street, it's going to appear that they're just two shed dormers going back. You're not going to see the fact that this one's here and that one's there. So so my initial take looking at the drawing, you know, at the bottom up there, is it takes away from the style of the house, the way it's attached to the roof. But I don't think you'd actually have that view coming down the road because you've got the house close by it. Right. But again, I, I'm you can't. not for or against that. I would have to walk the street to give you my honest opinion. Sure. Yeah. The, the only way you'd ever, in my, if I'm understanding, the only way you'd ever see that bottom left picture is if you were in your neighbor's yard parallel to the house. But the way the road comes, you can't really ever see My understanding that. also, but again, that's why I'd want to. Yeah, no, I'm not. Is there any opinion? <laughs> I walk the street. So the two dormers would match each other. And don't forget too, you create a valley in there. It's not like that roof comes across and like it, in that image, it looks like it comes across flat to the people. It, it doesn't, it, it's on an angle like this and this, this is like this. So you create that valley. So it's like two distinct roofs. It's just not rendered as clear there. Is that right? Yeah, that's, it's more like, that rendering will help you visualize it. But it would match, the two gables would match each other basically right now, as far as the dimensions. This, this view here from the rear of the house, um, you can see the two dormers. This being the one we're looking at now, this is the approved one. No. Oh, really? Yeah, this is the approved one. Oh. No. But this is from the back of the house. You don't see this. Uh, oh, okay. I thought, okay. So what's the view from the front then? Yeah. Head on from the front? Yeah. Head on, you won't see it. You won't see anything. See it. Uh, the, the head on is bottom right. Bottom left. That's the part. Yeah. But the the three D view you'll see is this one here. Right. That's one. Right. All right. So you guys want to go look at it? Is that what I'm hearing? Me anyhow. Pods for it. I can see. Moving right along. Okay. Yeah. Somebody wants to go home to bed. Let's see if that begins. Good time. 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 Second one. Uh, the next one is SIFT, which is um, Five Water Street. Five Water Street. Make a motion that uh, to take a pre application for Five Water Street. Second. Aye. Aye. So, we again on this one, we got this uh, approved. This was a um, Roof over the second floor deck in the back of the building that they use for dining right now. 
we were approved to do a roof over the back of the building. Um, in this photo here, you can see this is the existing condition right now. There's a little canopy there over the bar, some railings. And we had a bit of an oversight when we did this. Um, when we brought it in, our roof covered almost the entire deck except for this quadrant here and this quadrant here. So these were left open. open. So Adam took a look at it and decided you really prefer to cover the whole thing. So in this roof plan, we now have a roof covering that whole thing. There was a gable here. It was just smaller before. Can I ask why it was left open originally? The thought process was behind that? I think it was just an aesthetic choice on my part. And um, I got overruled by the client ultimately. So. So this is the view as if you were over at the um, standard looking back at SIFT. This is the front building. This is the back building, the back part of the building. This is the roof that was approved with the exception of this broader gable. Uh, before this gable was more like this. That's the north side of the building. That is the north side of the building. You'll have the, you know, the south version. Have the original. No, it didn't bring that's the yeah. east side. <clears throat> that's the south side. That hasn't changed at all. That's already been approved. This this side's already been approved. It's this gable coming out. Uh, it was here. It just was. It wasn't as broad. It, what do you mean it wasn't as mean it wasn't as as wide? Yeah. Right. Maybe I can explain better on this. So in this view here, this is the gable facing sift. Facing standard. On the standard, I'm sorry. And this is the pergola down below. This gable was approved. This was smaller. Didn't come as wide, wasn't as broad. This view here, you can see the whole thing. This is the broader gable that we're putting on there, opposing to. So I, I wasn't at the public hearing for this. So why so the gable the gable stops short of the end of the existing roof structure over the bakery portion of the building, right? So but why why was the gable narrower before? Than it is now. It was just an aesthetic choice on my part. Which, looking at it, my comment is I agree with your original aesthetic choice because the massing to me from your drawings seemed to way overwhelm the original building. Mm -hmm. I mean, massively overwhelm it. Just so you know, that was only in by like three feet. <clears throat> so right, I'm just saying looking at, look, looking at the drawing, I'm just giving so, my so maybe you need to see the other one. I think I think for presentation yeah. purposes it would be helpful to see what it's approved. Yeah. It actually will back pocket at all times. You got it? That's all I want. What is the, I mean, just from a, from my own visual, what's the height going to be off of the deck, off the floor? So that's 10 feet there. So 20 feet. So it's maybe, it might be another 10 feet, which eight to 10. If you want to try to zoom in on that, that even helps. Oh. So that was the what we approved. Yes. And 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 the the extension of that roof there is how many feet back from what was the the east edge of the original About building? Three feet. Three feet, yeah. 
Can I see the one you're proposing again compared no, to that? No, I mean, I mean, was it coming all the way out to the, the face of the building below? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. Yeah, it was. Definitely. So it wasn't quadrants. It was just slivers. Yes, instead of this. That's, Say that again. It did this instead of this. I mean, that's what you're talking about. Okay, all right, Scott, because I get the impression you were covering a lot more of the deck than than before and you I, really I just represented that. It's just the sliver that we're yeah, okay. if you zoom out, you can probably see them both. I mean it's probably a little thing, but this that the way the roof line continues over the covered part of the staircase on the old design just it looks a lot cleaner to me. Now you got this little sort of little where it's sort of dog leg. Like I said, it's probably minor, just the way my eye goes. That flat part under the window there? No, he's talking about the, is there a roof over the stair? Yeah, I'll show you if I can play it real quick. That, that dog leg is in there in both of them, isn't it? I don't know, this one looks like it's almost a straight line. Right, because it's, it's kind of smaller. Yeah. That's just it's the way my same, eye goes. That's the same. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. Yeah, I don't mind the break in that either. PVC something we generally. Pardon me. Is PVC something we generally don't blink at as a material? I hate it. I'm building it. Right. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just. Um, I mean, I think a lot of times when you paint the stuff now, I think it's. I think it's pretty difficult. I mean, you're talking about Azac. Yeah, that painted PVC beadboard. Yeah, I mean, it, it's is that Azac is painted PVC. It's the same. Okay. I, mean, it, I thought it was a different indistinguishable pretty tough okay. uh, just I'm just trying to go <laughs> I just think it's a terrible product but that's the thing. are they just using it for maintenance is that why it's easier to maintain it doesn't rot the other thing is you actually can't get the solid gold right now which is really the only alternative or cedar and cedar the price went yeah I have high cedar down. singles my house trust me I know yeah You know, clapboard's fourteen hundred dollars a square now. Materials only. For the one on your cedar, <clears throat> cedar. The one on my cost is what's approved. I mean, that's the who's approved before. Yeah. <clears throat> you guys have been approving people, well, other people on this commission have been approving PVC for quite a while. I think uh, it, painted PVC is fine. I think. Unpainted PVC, especially in like fencing, where it's that vinyl, mm. shiny, shiny, yeah, yeah, different. Mm. I think unfortunately we're going to have a problem with more composite materials and less availability of other okay. stuff. And on your phone, do you have the picture of it from another perspective or just that one? I can show it from the back, but I don't think it matters. It's not. I thought the back was what seen is only no, there's no change to the back, but there's the back. Yeah. And I'd love to see it compared to the perspectives. Per, compared to your drawings. Yeah. So here again. Same. From this view, it's virtually the same. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. No questions. Another old steel building. <clears throat> Those other one we're just chatting. Oh, okay. So, I get it. Um, next time you will have to go. No, no. Okay. Um, I guess moving right along. Yeah. Make a most the next, next address. address. So, the reaction to this one, though, is lukewarm. Excuse me? Lukewarm. Lukewarm. Okay. Yeah. What's that? The your sixth thing? Yeah.
It'd be nice to get, you know, at least I'm thinking of which way you're going to go. So I'm not wasting my time. I don't have a big problem. I don't, I don't have a big problem with that. I mean, it's not like the buildings. I, I think, I think that the, the, for purely, if my personal opinion, for purely aesthetic reasons, it, it probably looked a little bit better, which is why you probably did it shortened up. The wheel on either side, but and, and I agree with Todd. Yeah. But all in all, the back of the building. There's nothing right. egregious that we can point to the handbook and say. Right. So uh, can we get the um, address so we can make a motion? This is Central Hall, which is um, the address is eight dash twenty two West Main Street. Motion to view this pre app. I'll second. Um, Aye. Aye. <laughs> we have a new procedure if you haven't realized. Oh, I'm picking up on this. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to talk about that new no, procedure people, again on uh, new business. So, the, and technically, we have a new uh, army tech that's doing the mitts, so she doesn't know you all very well yet. So, if you could say your names uh, when you're first and second, it just it's just going to be. Bill Ferguson who made the motion. Uh, I've been second. Well, we'll get our votes roll call so she knows. You want to roll call someone's like that, though? Until she gets her names down, I guess. Well, we won't so switch it all approved. So yeah. if, there's, right. if there's a nay, then we'll do it. Roll. So in Central Hall, which is approved quite a while ago now. Is it uh, coming up on the five-year anniversary of that? Like, Yeah, I think we're beyond the five years, yeah. Uh, so it doesn't have to come back for a new it's all done oh, okay. oh okay. except for what we're proposing here. oh okay okay Bye, sir. The interior is not done that's, that's i guess that's, that's what's what I... kind of driving this They're, they wanted to gas fireplaces inside they were always planned but we didn't really work out how we we're going to vent them so uh some of them are going to go through the roof um but there's 12 units back three high so we can't get all those chimneys all the way up and then through the roof so the fallback position is to go to some of these wall-mounted units, and I, I warned them because of the last job I was working for them, put it in before they got the permit, that they better get this approved. So um, these are the same kind of wall-mounted units. It's a stainless steel unit, and we would paint it out to match the siding color so that it doesn't jump out too much at you, but it does project off the wall. I think it's like eight or nine inches. So on the north side of the building, um, the two second floor units um, need the, uh, the wall mounted vents, can't run them through a roof. So we're proposing this location here, and I've shown them, you know, the same color as the siding. So you get some idea that they're gonna, we're going to try to make them disappear and not be too uh, loud on the outside of the building. So that, that's my question. Is it going to cause any noise? Not as our purview, just me talking about it. is there going to be any noise or any other issues for those windows on the unit above them? From those well, the, the passive vents, um, probably got to check to see if there's a distance to the windows on those, um, especially those two. Um, but they're not, they don't make any noise. They're passive. Any, any fans or blowers mm -hmm. at those? Units typically have our internal to recirculate air around the back of the firebox to heat the space, but typically not exhausting out. It's just, no, I don't know, that's why I just asked. Not that exhausting. I don't think so. No, they aren't power vents, yeah. typically. No. They're, they're, as I said, there's a fan inside the unit that well, just uses a, a blower to heat, you know, pulls it in on the bottom, blows it out on the top. Well, I'm, just, I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. about you, it's, it's, there's an optional power vent. If you're running like 110 feet, then you have to use the power of it. So how do you get the combustion out? Yeah, yeah. Where's the smoke? If it comes out there. Then it's gas. It's a, it's a direct vent. It doesn't matter. It's a, it blows out. Not no, sucks it in. blows out. The heat makes it rise. Heat rises. Makes it right. move. So, so I guess here's my question again, not under anything we do. And I don't know the system on us. So it might be a dumb question. That, when it's 10 degrees out, is that vented fireplace going to fog up the windows on top of it to kill that person's view of the river? I hope not. <laughs> I don't know. I know this condo's going for a million bucks, and if I spend a million, I wouldn't want my view disturbed. <laughs> well, well, I don't think it's any different than like I have a, I need for my Wiesman gas yeah. combi that just sticks out. It actually sticks out below a window or close to and a window. And that's a power event in that case. 
right. it's just the pipe that comes out but it you'll see like like um steam yeah, yeah so i'm wondering if it's just gonna again it doesn't fog the window up though no, at my house no and on randall's wharf in the condo we have a whole series of the, the series of those and i've never seen them fog up anything those windows open above it so i mean would anything go into the windows from the units above there's a, I'm sure there's a listing, which I haven't looked at yet, that tells you how far this has to be from an opening. I think that's a whole building code thing, but I think it's, a, it's worth it. We have to be off I think it's worth making sure that it we're, works we're before we go on it. Right, well, I'll do that homework. Yeah. Between now but the, the fireplace is, Peter, or where are they located in the building? They're pretty much right in line. There's a common wall here, and they're right on that common wall. Maybe five feet from where the uh, exit. The exit. Yeah, and then there's a, there's some on the side of the building. Um, this is the uh, west side. So uh, Via Amelia is here. If you're looking at Via Amelia, mm -hmm. right? Um. So one, two, three here. And then this the street is on the left. You will see these from the street. Yeah, this is the canopy carport we were trying to do. And uh, the gravel street is right out here. So you will see these on the street. And then opposite these on the uh, east side, there's three more. Those same, are the same location. Right. And the alleyway there starts, let's see. Well, the building next door, uh, the ice cream shop building, starts about here, goes this way. So you'll see these from the water. How about the ones that are going to be on the roof? That aren't bent to... They're going to be little metal chimneys that come up through the roof. I don't think you'll see those. Okay, I see those from anywhere. If you're flying over near drone. Yeah, yeah. I per personally, I don't have an issue with the penetrations coming through the side. At least for me, I don't think they're, they're material. I agree. I think you're also just in general going to have more of these as more people do gas, you know, powered things. If we go to electrification and then give it all fossil fuel, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> like a lot of gas fireplaces. Yeah, we just have to deal with it. We just have to deal with the condensers. I hope they have those big fans that are off Block Island on top of the building that would be ideal need more kids to mine the cobalt I'm not, I'm not certain certain like smell of the, and the gas going into the I'll, it's above. I'll check the listing and see what the yeah like the, I don't know if it's HTC stuff I'm just thinking out you know I guess these people won't open their windows so yeah they're, they're, if you're close to the one behind my house it's pretty, you can't smell anything it just creates the summer or in the winter sorry I steam really. It's like vapor. I don't know. I guess it's it's, it's it's the condensate. It's just it's condensing when it hits the right. it's carbon dioxide. Di or mon? Mon. I not monoxide. Yeah, I'll kill you. Okay. And then the last one is the pump station on Gravel Street. And then the address. Better open up in your address, Peter. You know, I don't know what the address yes. that is. I'll make a motion to city view. property. Add. I'll make a motion for a fourth pre-app. I'll second for the pump station. For the pump station. station. That right. has no address. Called zero gravel. Second. I'll second that motion. Aye. It was Todd Brady seconding. Erickson presenting. Aye. All approved. I, I, I'll figure out the address by the time I come back. Does it have an address? Okay. I don't know. I think actually somebody was looking for it and they couldn't find it at the town here. So, should have a 911 address. How's that? It says should have a 911 address. Emergency calls. Nobody lives there. Still some burns on there. Could go up the flames still. So, as part of the Central Hall project, um, in the upper floors of the of Central Hall on the west side, you go out on your balcony, look down, you see inside this well that's behind these roof lines here. There's like an eight foot deep well in there. There's pumps and 
fans and all kinds of disgusting gear. So we are proposing to build a pergola on top of that and the town, the engineering part of the town is enthusiastically going along with that. And these will be removable panels so that when the equipment goes, they can just crane them off and remove the equipment. So we're trying to disguise the view into that well from our upper stories of our building. Um, yeah, because I, I went, I'm on the uh, sustainability task force or whatever, and they had photographs of the inside of that building. I never realized that there's big concrete walls in there that keep everything above the flood level, you know, the sewage yeah. pump station. So this bird's eye view here, you can see these units here are looking into that. So this pergola is designed to obscure that view. Um, we're looking at doing it in fiberglass. We've had a vendor drop their version of it right here. It's fiberglass, it'll be painted white. Will that be at or below the height of the mansard? It sits on top. It sits on top of the mansard. So this okay. view I think is from the street. They're all, they're all yeah, the, the camera so we can. Got to zoom out, Pete. Want more? Yeah. So, zoom out. I'm trying to look at some more. That drawing over there at the bottom. There we go. So, from the street, <laughs> you'd see this right now. The only thing you see is this like sort of a parapet that they have on there. There is a parapet up there. Yeah, and it's lead coated or it's cop. So it's all sort of kicked out right now. Um, so we're going to sit on top of that whole thing. And you'll see this rendering here. You can see it sticking out on the top there. Um, show the ends of the pieces coming out this way too well, you'd have to zoom into that. I, I totally understand the point. It just looks kind of like it looks kind of stupid. Yeah. Kind of like a weird crown. Yeah. I mean, is it some like cleaner, flusher way to I mean, yeah, is it? That's my initial feeling too. I I think it, I mean, uh, it's like you're overdoing it. Yeah. No yeah. offense. <laughs> okay. Uh, put a flat thing on top. Yeah. So you'd rather see like a nothing, nothing, a cornice mm -hmm. going around rather than all these members sticking out. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Even like a yeah. piece of crown molding, and then make something inside of it. I mean, it, I think it, it kind of need this. So the the pergola thing obscures the view from the balcony. Right. So that's kind of a given that we're working with. But we could we could disguise all that so you don't see it from the ground with a with a fascia and a yeah. ground or something. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's I, I don't have a problem with the upper view. It's the side view. I mean, okay. it looks like something you literally just well, Home Depot plopped on top of there. I mean, no offense, just it looks very added on. Thousand dollar item from Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. Peter, so when, when it rains, the, the, the water just goes right into that. Yeah, we can't, you can't put it. I know you realize that, but no, that's what the way it works now. So it yeah, just pours it into the in, inside of the, I mean, that, so that whole pump station, it's really just an exterior screen yeah. around all of the pump station. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's, it's hollow inside. It's basically right. just a yeah. square right. cement wall. I think we just hide the sides of it. Somewhere. Okay. Yeah, because you can't see it really from anywhere. Oh, can can you, could you build it down inside of the uh, can you upper? Make it so we can yeah. support it. It's, 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 not, it's not regular inside. See this dark line here? This is the outline yeah. of the enclosure in there. So you've got, you'd have to build this thing all sort of weird. It's easier if we're in uh, simple panels that we can crane off and on. So into it to fasten it down. The area outside that line, what what is that like? Right? This is roof, flat roof. Flat yeah. roof. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so you're bridging over the flat roof and everything. Yeah. You couldn't just put a ledger on the inside of that okay. thing and just just say that. Drop it off. Maybe. Maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's Save easy. yourself some lattice. Yeah. And so is your structure clear spanning that? Yeah. There's steel that runs across here. It supports that you're adding these panels. So there's like 16 panels, each one's removable. And you're adding the steel structure then yeah. to support the panels. Which we would have to do even if we drop it in there. 
Yeah. I would just see if you can put it on a ledger and just drop the whole thing. All right. You can look at that. Yeah, that's what I was going to. And it saves the money, the crown molding and all that. Yeah, stuff. that'll save the money for sure. But then, you know, we probably want to run that crown consistently around all four sides. If, if you do the crown. We don't want that crown to be stepped in. But, I mean, there's an option to do no crown. What I'm saying is do no crown. Oh, just a ledger. No crown. crown. Yeah, can, can you, you do that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can. You got enough clearance to do that? Well, that's something I got to check. The headroom. Inside. Yeah. There, I mean, there's headroom to walk around. I just don't know what they need. To, you know, they may have special equipment that they're working with in there. I don't know. So option A seems to be get rid of it all together. Yeah. Uh, do it, but hide it. Yeah, do it. yeah. Option B is create some sort of crown molding and put the ledger inside the crown or something. Right. It just it just looks really busy. It, it looks like a, a cap on a cap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, well, no, I will tell you that I, I, I don't recall sort of focusing in on the existing copper that is tarnished over yeah i never even know is there anything brought it up i'm like i, I i'm gonna like yeah i'm gonna look for it tomorrow like because i can't even visualize oh, it was weird it was copper with a pretty cedar roof and then vinyl siding forever and that finally came off and you guys did it which looks 10 times better yeah and they didn't i'm gonna get front here they didn't get a permit to replace the siding on that they took the vinyl off and they put beat board or um ship lap on there way better and corner boards articulated corner boards looks beautiful yeah and we replaced the shingle roofing on it too so it was all, and you so you you guys paid for that it, i didn't they didn't yeah right but you were party to the yeah there was a lot of money into other people's property <laughs> what is the age of this because the, the those it's, pump stations it's not a historic those were built in the 70s i think the the sewer system for minister um Okay, I think the uh, the uh, light coated copper or the copper kind of blends in with the sky when you look up at it, so it doesn't jump out. Just for the sake of clarification, when you come back to do this, you should just include the siding and stuff in it. Yeah. Okay. Just so it's yeah, it's on. It's actually on these drawings. So. Yeah. And some photographs. Yeah. Okay. It, you know, maybe including a photograph from up top, just looking down, in, just be on the deck of what down. exactly we're looking yeah, at. Yeah, we have those. <laughs> Not that it's visible. We don't care. So they actually no, sold any of these? Yeah. I think they have two. So nobody's moved in. No. No, the interior. I saw a light on the other day, but I don't know. It's a they finished a model. That's all they okay. And now they're sheetrocking it. The elevator? What's that? The elevator? Oh, yeah. The yeah. elevator. There's two elevators. They both run. Yep. The lobbies are done, which you can see from the boardwalk when you walk by. Plan completion 2028. Before I retire, man. <laughs> I can't retire. What am I going to do? <laughs> so, okay. Points taken. Thank you. Okay. That's it. Yeah, you can uh that's not coming up for a couple weeks so let's wait till it's official but i did want to kind of address the policy change under new business are we on new business oh where we are we can go back to whatever you'd like we're on new business we just closed up pre-apps so to make a motion to close up the pre-apps yeah, I make a motion. Bill Ferguson makes a motion to close the pre-application. Levinson seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 You want to make a motion to discuss what you want to do on new business? Yeah, so I would like to make a motion to discuss the change of pre-applications on new business and get the feedback of the commission on it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. What are you talking about? But... Yeah, so... Peter, Tom, and Eric run an email with uh, myself and John uh, Burt, the town manager. So somebody complained that we were violating FOI on our pre-applications. It was already determined that is not the case. Uh, 
town manager Burns now instruct the town staff to make everybody put pre-applications or encourage, is that the right word? What, what was your direct or Because I'm unclear. So the way I'm interpreting this is people can come in and apply for free applications and we can put them on the agenda if they're in prior to the notice going out. They can come in for a pre-application at the meeting, but there has to be a motion on the floor to put them on the agenda and follow the policy of that. So what I just, what we just, what did, we just right. did is what the new policy. Right. Well, no, hang on. So let's, let's reverse it all back. So... The certain town councilor is now watching HDC meetings and nitpicking things. That's where this is coming from. <clears throat> um, it's a claim to FY violation. It is not. We've already gone through this. I actually talked to an FY attorney again on Saturday. It is not. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200 bucks. It's not. Just not. Uh, um, so because we're not taking action on anything. Right. We're right. just listening and right. So so he, here's where I see the issue. I'll just be very upfront. My emails to John Bird are now affiable. So if anybody wants to really make a deal out of it, they can pull those, those emails. They can see the towns just because they believe it's a perceived FOI violation. As Tom Hennick, the FOI trainer, told the town council on February 28th, any decisions made on an FOI violation are reversible. And that starts from date of discovery, which would be tonight. So basically for the past 30 years, anybody that disagrees with anything on a pre-app could now take it to the FOI commission and have it reversed. But there's nothing to reverse. Well, exactly. But it would just cause a lot of but liability. This, it would no decisions made. Liability for the town. So what I would like to do is, it's up to you guys. Either we keep doing it this way, which is a people come in, we do what we just did with Peter, and it's clean and it's legal and it's followed by Robert Trill's orders, or in the interest of transparency, if we want to make them do it, then let's just add it to the agenda, have a public hearing so the public way in and vote that we change our rules that everybody has to do it, but then they got to put the sign up. I don't care if it works for the public, but you guys, I just don't like this. It is, but it isn't, but it is, isn't, isn't. We just need clarification once and all, and that's for us, for town staff, and for the residents. Why can't they just ask for like, um, I forgot what it is called. Like, what's it when you go to the court and you ask for an answer? Declaratory judgment. Yeah. I can't just ask the FOI commission because you've got it, I, it's too many people not know. I think I think my understanding is is if we don't have specific rules set up for the process other than the format of showing public notification on that, then Robert's rules falls into play. Absolutely correct. Rob, Robert's rules falls into play. Basically, you can make a motion to add it to the agenda. The commission decides to put it on the agenda. Then that makes it legit. Isn't Absolutely it, correct. Isn't in the guidelines it talks about the preamp about coming in and seeking advice and blah, 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 no, no decision. Right, but it doesn't get into the discussion. Does it have, require public notice and all that other stuff? So why can't we just amend the rules to just to say, if you're going to come in for a pre-app, no action can be taken, but anyone can come in for a pre-app and discuss their project. You can't and that's change, all. You can't change the rules. You'd have to have a public hearing. You can't vote to change the rules. You have is, to have a is that a rule? Oh, well, I can't. Why not just have a public hearing? And yeah, we, we can change rules of the public hearing, right? Yeah. I think with without there being that in play just follow robert's rules which is what we've been doing and that's why i don't like it's cumbersome that yeah, is but that's the whole point of robert's rules. Yeah, you get into changing the rules then you know somebody can want to change some other rule and then and let's just re easy process to then let's just revert to robert's and that's why don i harper with this the town manager now changing the oh, wait, process wait, just step back for a second you can just like you can do a text amendment you can just we can just make a motion to have a public hearing about changing that rule, specific to that rule and only that rule, and just end it at that. It's not like someone can walk in and say, you're changing that rule, now I want to start changing all these other rules. I mean, they can, but they got to do it separately. Right. But I just leave, I, I think the pre-app thing, the way it was working for 30 years is just fine. And I agree. That's why I want to leave it up to you guys in the public. You know what, if somebody feels something's more transparent than the other, I'm good with it. I just don't like this if, kind of ad hoc, we're going to change it this week because somebody said this. I don't think that's fair to the commission or the public. And I just wanted you guys to decide how you want it. And I don't think the spirit of FOIA is violated by the fact that someone comes in like he does and say, oh, I want to come to you for a public hearing, right? present this so that you can vote on it, properly noticed, blah, 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 blah. But I just want to give you the heads up. This is kind of what I'm thinking. you know. And, and that was what I got from the FOIA attorney that I talked to. As long as we don't vote on it, it's not a FOIA violation okay what's the i mean to have a public hearing you'd have to have a notice you'd have to have the public have a right to speak on it um we'd have to notice what it is that we're proposing 
uh, doesn't have to be the public hearing part of it, but it has to be on the agenda. So when you, the, you're talking, are you asking about changing the rules or are you asked, are you? Oh, I'm, yeah, he's, he's, oh, you're talking about changing the rules? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, to change the rules, you have to have a public hearing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, what does that entail? Add it to another meeting as an agenda item and have yeah. a public hearing. Someone right. wants to come and show up. That's that's what I'm I mean. Like when I did the text amendment for the downtown district, whatever that is. They have yeah, it's a, the planning has a written out policy on it. That's why I said they have a they follow statutory language with that. So yeah, I don't know. It's that easy. Yeah. To public hearing. You got to help. It's not. I thought we could just say. And I think that I think what the, what it, the history of it has always been this way of doing it. And from my understanding is we shouldn't have been doing it that way. But, but I've had and, and, it's, and I think until it went to Zoom meetings. It was fine because there was always people coming in, they'd sign in and everything was taken care of. They just went by that process. I think now that they're doing the videos, you're going to see a lot more of this. No, they, had it very that, that's really personally driven. driven. And I'm going to keep pressure. That's personally driven. That's got nothing to do with us. That's well, I mean, the, I, I, a personal. But there's also is that there is that angle that you have to watch out for. It's what just a free, it's a precautionary measure to just follow Robert's rules and then you fine. Mean, what do you mean the Zoom? Well, I think because that's now going to become forward is that's going to be the part everybody's going to be looking at for reference. So I mean, before he used to just get the minutes, that's all you had to go by. What, what difference is it? She said, he's saying now that you can watch it on GMTV, you can hear every word everybody says. So it just opens somebody that wants to be persnickety and the saying, right. oh, John used the wrong word or yeah, exactly. this word. Yeah, or, exactly. But you can do the same words in a public hearing. What difference is that? No, no. All he's saying is that it's more visible. More, it's, there's more, more visibility. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Somebody can sit there and he's just easier. Just better. So that's why it's more important for these commissions just to follow the guideline completely. And that's why Robert's rules dictates the process of going through it. So for Robert's rules is what you follow. You got to follow Robert's rules. Well, and that's my point. I think we need consistency. So it's good. There are, we keep the pre-app the way it was where we're not saying, okay, John Goodrich has got a pre-app. And we just vote him in like we just for, for Peter. See, the one that came in tonight was easy uh, because he came in prior. He was hoping to get on the agenda. He missed it. Right. But he was able to get on for pre-app. But but what I'm saying is we don't want to and for the trained attorneys so they can tell if I'm wrong, wrong or right or wrong. You don't be arbitrary either. Where it's like, okay, you got to be on the agenda, but John, you can show up and get voted in. It's got to be one way or the other. I don't think we can. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. It's like right. you can get him on the agenda, you get him on the agenda, but if you can't, then you just follow the proper rules procedure and putting him on the agenda for pre -act. I mean, I think that there's two points. It's you can do it the way that we did it tonight, and it makes no difference. We can amend the rules, and it makes no difference. I think we can also keep doing it the way we've been doing it for 30 years because I think they're wrong. And I agree with yeah, Eric. I, I wish someone could just get an answer from the way. Well, no, I think they that's the way they wanted it. I go, that's what the answer I'm hearing. Yeah, but the answer I got from Tom Hennick. So Tom Hennick gave a, a training. Let's follow Robert's rules, though. Right. So that I, he actually said that. Yeah. So, no, so I talked to him too. Tom, yeah. Tom, Tom was very clear that if you're coming in for a pre-app and you're not taking any action on it, mm -hmm. and you're just going to answer some questions that are already in the handbook mm -hmm. that we're following right. anyways, you're not doing anything. And, and so I asked, I asked Tom that, that question specifically in this room. Councilor Bordelon, RPM member Thomas, and Councilor Franco were present with me in the room. And I specifically asked him, he goes, no, it's fine. It's not an FOI violation. Hmm. So now that we kind of have this change, I just, it's got to be one or the other. I just think, you know, we talk about consistency. Do you also think you're going to get like a plethora of FOI violations from no. pre-applications for the no, no, District Commission? No, I would Mr. Connecticut? No, no, I would hope not. I mean, please. It's on the precautionary side. They're being very overly cautious. Well, they're letting somebody be a bully, is what it is. And I don't like giving bullies any, any well if, traction. Can you can 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 you not petition the FOI commission to actually give you a written ruling on whether this yeah. is or is not an FOI a violation? Let's get, let's get an and, answer. And, and and this conversation. Yeah, well, there was not not from an, the this guy you talked to, but actually. Right, no, we're gonna figure out. All right. So it's called a declaratory judgment. They can they can issue a rule. That you just ask for a question. Right, right. Ruling, yeah. We don't specifically deal with it, but Robert's Robert. rules is followed. Do we have to follow Robert's rules completely? Is that right? Yeah. The way when we you ask right. a question. Yeah. Perfect. Declaratory yeah. ruling. We'll check on that. The agency and you will see exactly what it is. How they interpret something. Yeah. Right. A judgment if we went to court to get it. Okay. Yeah. Right. Talk to five attorneys, get five answers. And that, well, as a term, we know, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's the reality is you've got you a bunch of different opinions on this one. Mm -hmm. I just think just ask them. And then we change it, we change it. But, but I guess, I guess the in the interim, if Paul the town is worried about it, we're better off yeah. just voting 
just uh, do, do what, what we did tonight, we did tonight. Yeah. so that it's not going to raise you know an additional challenge right I, I agree well that's the point I think we're fine with what we were but that was the we had to I think add so, I so, had that. I'm like you know how much how cumbersome are we making this process well, well I agree with you I agree with you so I want to make sure I'm clear on what's happening. Until we hear from FOI a final statement of specifying differently from what we've been advised, we're going to follow Robert's rules right. for every pre app that's yeah. not on the agenda. Right. So anything we add to the agenda. Yeah, you basically anything. Anything out yeah. Exactly. I'm specific, it's all this, yeah. but not there technically. Do yeah. Robert's rules put a motion together to discuss it. Not, I would appreciate though if you're gonna ask them question let us give input to that question because the way the question is asked by certain no cc on the email right is not going to necessarily mirror the exact question we're asking yeah well no i'm going to get the gist of that one but. because there were multiple conversations with this gentleman tom Hennick that i'm going to just the specifics on that if we don't have any of the policy do we have to change the policy or just follow robert's rules well and that's all clarification doing and i'll be very upfront you know no, no, no. I, sorry, one second. Yeah, I no, just no. think the real question, though, is that if we're not taking action on anything, mm -hmm. and someone right. comes in only to just right. see you, you, advice, there's no action being taken by the commission. Why does it have to go through the process? Right, right. It doesn't. That's what I want to be. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, I said I agree. I mean, I mean, you saw us today. Firstly, I think you, you saw. I mean, I think a prime example is you can show the videotape of tonight. He's right. he, he gave his presentations and he was looking for a reaction from so us. Technically, you're going to have a public hearing on what goes before with right. a petition that has to follow the process. Right. Right. Know what's going Where on. the way I look at it, if we want to add it to the agenda, now we got to have a pink side for the pre application. You know? right. Right. <laughs> it, it, it also it just over town. potentially starts to create bad excuses. What if, like, one night we didn't want to add someone? I'm just saying, like, really, like, then, then what you wouldn't add me? So now mm -hmm. I got to I be. Mean, Hmm. Just it could it could skew a different way. Yeah. You know, I don't know why we wouldn't. I mean, who cares? But, right, but you know, what if someone? What if someone? What if it wasn't us? And it was ten years now. If it becomes like a Robert's rules, or just a rubber stamp, where you're just basically right. following the process because that's the process to right. add it to the agenda. Okay, we're following that process. Robert's rules. But you do it to everybody. Everyone who's coming in for. Hey, yeah, but it's, what is he? Is he a counsel to the? He's like um, Tom Hennick is the public trainer for the FOI commission, but he's not an attorney. Oh, he's not an attorney. No. <clears throat> he's seen all the rulings and all the so, I mean, he's probably more trained than anyone else, I would, from based upon the way his understanding of it. But I just think that when I at, when the question was asked by by I think it was John Burt first before you asked or something, it was asked in a way, and then you asked in a different way. And then he then somehow I got called called and got involved yeah. in, and no one i mean it didn't seem like the town was asking the question properly i i I'm my commission my other town i disagreed with the town attorney on something and i went through those same spiel and it's like i didn't think he was i think he was being overly cautious right with the commission and i didn't agree with what he was telling us we had to do and so i went it, through the whole it process seemed like the question being asked to tom though was if someone comes and something's gonna get added to the agenda this is what it seemed like John Burt was asking him, should we be voting on it? And in that scenario, if we're going to add something to the agenda that we're going to take a vote on, that's different. That's, that's completely completely different. different. Right, exactly. Yeah. Then someone coming in. I mean, see, like if the town, if the, yes. um, you have the public comment section at the town council meeting, mm -hmm. would the town council have to sit there and add every single person that came up just to yap? Mm -hmm. They don't imagine, now. They don't. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. is, is, this any, is this any different? I don't think so. Except that you're receiving it's an application. It's a pre-application, so you're about a person. It's not even an application. You're not really giving. Well, it's not well, a pre-application, but but it's not even like <laughs> taking the document. I asked. We're giving them back to them. Yeah. Submit them. Come back. I, I think that the, I think the one problem you run into is like tonight with Peter over here, where he's like, "All right, so how are you guys going to vote on this?" I'm trying to get a feel for right. It, but I don't think right. that's the best way to go about it. Either, no. Right, but but that that's got you guys stay neutral and not getting into the opinion how you're going to vote on it at that. Yeah, I mean, is that a bad thing if someone comes with something that's so ridiculous? Or just well, you just point out what's ridiculous about it, but you still keep your opinion of how you're going to vote. You know? oh, that, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I said I got to yeah, walk right. it before I can give any opinion. Right. Yeah. But, but that that was what I started to say before. Is like take use today as an example. He asked us our opinion, and we just said, you know, no opinion, lukewarm. Right. You no, know? I mean, right, right, right. right. You, yeah, I think we're more yes. stay away from opinions. It's right, just basically looking at the project. Is everything there that we need to look at for an application? Sure. 
The request for a declaratory ruling is not, it's a formal thing. They'd have to file something with the agency. Yeah. I'm not familiar with that, so yeah, I gotta look into the yeah, it's not, part of it. It's not that, it's not like- Not that simple. Yeah. Ask them the opinion, but it's complicated. Yeah, yeah. They can have a public hearing on your request, an opinion. I think they may be even required to have a public hearing. One of us files an FOI violation against ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I think you should. I think you should do it. Just get an answer. Get yeah, a yeah. real answer for person making. Yeah, look into the process. Get the declaratory ruling on it. See what it takes. So what one other really minor point, but it, it helps if the consideration are in the same order as the public hearings. Yeah, that's what they're yeah. Something that's minor. Not it's very good point there, Don. Uh, Called me out about waiving the hearing procedure because after asking the clerk to read the call. Mm -hmm. These are not in the same order. Screwed well, right up about that. Huh? Yeah. Roll sleeping. call, where is it? It's not even in it. I think the clerk no, did it's an excellent job reading the roll today, by the way. I'd like to say that for the record. Yeah. Did they change our heading on the minutes, having our right titles in the right places? Oh, yeah, remember that. <laughs> On this, well, yeah, what do we do with the agendas? Well, um, the minutes for the meeting. Remember last time there was a problem where they didn't have the right titles and they didn't. Have oh yeah, yeah. She was taking notice of that. This was our first round with the minutes. So, okay. I don't know how she. You guys approved them, so she must have done a good job. Can we also um, just in two <clears throat> meetings? Could we uh, try to make an effort to get back to the looking at the handbook? Yes. Not next yeah, meeting. Yeah, yeah, because I have um, I've made my edits. Yeah, we can just add it to the agenda for that meeting. We'll spend a few minutes going over. It. Yeah. Well, how, have you guys systematically figured? Do you want to? I do. Make a motion to discuss this right now. Oh. I make a motion to discuss. New business, so it's it's. Still, it's still yeah, good. I have to make a motion. Adding the handbook uh, review to a meeting. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Um, I think it would just be good in in four weeks to just. At least jump into it if there's like major. Let's just start with a quick thing. Where, okay, where do we all think? I think we should hire somebody, take their money, hire oh, an independent agree. person, and have them rewrite the whole I, thing. Well, I I completely agree. I mean, we're going to have to be involved. With the, you know, and then they just, submit it to us, obviously. Right. right. Then they suggest like having a citizen review board. So, but I think getting the ball rolling would be a good idea. Get the money. If you can get the money, but I mean, have at it. If I was going to say, if you wanted. I would break it down into sections so you're not overwhelming yourself with trying to go over the whole book at one meeting and break it down like, hey, you, let's talk about application procedures, the regulated activities at like one meeting, something like that, and then go to the following meeting and go, and go into the next section. We, that way you guys have like only a certain area you're looking at to kind of really- hey, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the other thing we did too we, at the Property Reuse Committee, we just went all looked over towns over New England and got like their procedures. Uh -huh. old best practices 772 is pull handbooks from other towns and like hey, that's a good idea we like yeah, that that good. sucks yeah it's just it's well, but it's a lot well, of work can, well, i'd say you guys can stay out of the admin section anyway but i mean you want to get to the application process guidelines get into the guidelines part of it but if we're going to hire somebody to rewrite the thing <laughs> we waste an time going over I think, things that might even you know not but, but i think that person should rewrite the whole thing with our feedback or we hire the person, have them break it down because they kind of know the process. I, at the end, I think we need to get going on it wherever yeah. he thinks is the best way I'm open to. I'm not. We've been doing, we've been changing the regs my other time. We've been going so many pages. It's like we're going from this page to this page, next meeting, this is what we're going over. Like well, that. let me look at it tomorrow. I'll email you a section right. of what we'll do. We'll start. Well, you're not getting overwhelmed by it. And then you just break it up into a bunch of meetings. And then when you're not, because otherwise people are all over the place. You just like jump zoning. Zoning. Did, did they hire somebody to? Yeah, to do it for years. Yeah. I don't think, though, I don't think where the purpose here is to page leader, right? I think the purpose is just to clean up some stuff. And there's a lot of information in that that we don't even get involved anymore. Like, I keep going back to, but there's a section relating to like streets should have cobblestone line edges. Like, right, the town will not allow them. <laughs> they are paving streets. You guys, you guys have the ability to revise it as you want and just go to public hearing with the new revision. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a major rewrite. Yeah, and Tom's telling me that a lot of what we have is just not enforceable. You have to go to the court to support something we did based on what's in the guidelines. It's so mushy. He can't right, because it's ambiguous. A lot of language so is ambiguous. ambiguous. He can't enforce it. Right. 
the sub, you know, subject. So I just think if you don't don't go overwhelming yourselves and set up a designated section of it to start looking at, at and then you kind of go through it. Now, and that way you're not spending five hours and go through trying to go through the whole book at one night. It's like go through X Y Z this meeting, go through this the next meeting, and you just kind of tear it off and break it down that way. I'm just trying to think about what you just said. So in a way, I I don't I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's what he's telling me. It's just very well, as you guys are reading it, you'll feel that. <laughs> no, that, that's a real question, though. Yeah. This is a damn thing enforceable, anyway. Is that... Now we get into the enforceable section, enforceability section changes a little bit. No, no, no. I'm saying, is this handle even enforceable? Period. Well, especially if the language is so ambiguous that you can't But is it the decision that it would be enforced, not the handbook? I think it's probably how soft the language is versus how hard and distinct you get with certain right. parts of the it. The language is so squishy in the handbook, it's hard for him to enforce that, well, it violates it or it doesn't violate it. Like if you guys were to say the chain link fence are not allowed. Right, right. Yeah. Period. I would say sometimes they're allowed if they're well, that, not that's, within that's a good 20 point. feet of the. Some of the stuff in there says like it's discouraged. Yeah. Right. That's right. And, and what does that mean, discourage? Okay, I'll take a look at it. We'll pick a good section of it. Do you we'll have any idea like who you could hire to rewrite it? I think I think you were talking about doing it on your own. You could do yeah, it. We're not, I don't know. You're not, you're not completely altering. You just don't we're not hiring it. anybody. Oh, I don't think we could because we have to get the fund. We have to get the buy for the grant. It's been like a year and a half trying to get money. Yeah. Try to get the money. We're just going to get the money. Clarifications to ambiguous aspects so we don't have <clears throat> similar problems that we've had in the past. Okay, good luck. <laughs> so it's be, well, you meet twice a month, so that's a bonus. Yeah. It's not once a month. Well, I think we should see what it takes to get the grant. I mean, maybe it's quicker than we think. Let's ask the question. Well, I think that's a great idea. I also think that there is, if we keep it high level on at least cleaning it up, we can just clean up some of the stuff that we know is a problem. Yeah, in the fence. I agree. You know. And if we want to re rewrite it, that's Maybe a longer term solution. And I think there's some sections too. Like it, 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 in there, it says like no shed door. Right. Shed door was everywhere. Right. It's changed. No, that's it's that we do for a remodel cleanup. Right. Yeah. 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 It talks about like the, a lot of the ornate fences, which are long, long gone. You know, and the granite curbing and all that other stuff. We talk I, mean, I wish it still was around. Talk about PVC. <laughs> I think it says no. Yeah. I know. Uh -huh. Okay, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Aye. Aye. Seven hours to get my spend my Tuesday nights. So yeah. I would have slept this late. I would have slept this late. Peter screwed us up. Are we are we done recording? Well, that did you rec stop recording? No. Thank you. It was just funny that like Peter came in. We I thought we were done at seven thirty. Then Peter well, that could be one of our bases. You <laughs> came too late. Right. You're not on time. And